Hi everybody, it's June, June Angel Pews. Um, okay, I've got a few um, videos for you over the next um, 24 hours, say. Um, <laughs> it's alright, I'm just thinking how, how to approach this. This is a video response um, to my lovely friend uh, Virginia. Hi V. Um, Virginia is uh, Virginia1468 on YouTube and she wanted us to, um, well she asked if she could get to know um, her YouTube friends um, a little bit better. Now I've known Virginia for quite a while and she, she knows about me. Uh, to a certain extent, but I'm hoping I'll let her know a few more things about me today. Uh, one of the the most obvious thing is she knows what I look like, <laughs> but um, I'm afraid I'm not like the other ladies that have bravely um, did their um, video responses with a face. I, I can't do that. Um, to me, I'm not... I just can't do it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I just, uh, I, I, reg I regret, I have to say, I mean, to be honest, I don't like the way I look at my age. You know, I would prefer to go back and and look at photos and think, well, yeah, that's when I was in my heyday. That was I was happy, etc., etc. So, no. Um, and I'm certainly not, I don't want the wider um, community on uh, YouTube, Facebook, wherever, to to um, to see me. So that, that's what I've decided to do. I mean, you may agree or disagree, whatever, but that, that's me. So I've left a few things um, on my table for you to uh, quickly... No, sorry, not quickly, for you to look at while um, I, I'm talking to you. Um, the other day I showed um, some of the things that uh, I was, I'd had given to me, I'd made, etc, etc, about, uh, and telling you about my love of ballet. And one of the things that I forgot, because it was on display in my craft room, oh, shouldn't we use the word craft? Sorry, not going to relate to it again. Because it's not going to be craft related, you see, this video. So I'm going to try my best. But however, this, um, can you see that? Look, that's what I, one of the things I didn't show you the other day. And this is from my gorgeous friend, Natasha. Hi, Nat. Um, gosh, you made this for me. For my birthday, I believe. Oh, about three years ago. Two, three years ago. And look at that lovely little ballet dancer in there. Look at the curtains. Look at the ballet shoes. The ballet dancer in the background, look. And the ballet dancer in the foreground. And that beautiful mask indicating my love of the theatre. So I just thought I'd pop that there and say again, thank you, Natasha. Natasha's my, one of my Russian princesses, that's what I call her. The other one um, is uh, Irina, a passion for craft. So I've got two Russian princesses. Okay, so that's that. Um, this, by the way, is... Um, I used to love doing cross stitch years ago and I did dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and I used to have them mounted on my wall. Um, this one I love. It reminds me, the image reminds me of my, my daughter, uh, Claire, who's um, 50 now, would you believe? <gasps> well, would I believe? I can't believe it. Um, Yes, uh, but it's actually the uh, cross-stitch version of, sorry, my light glaring at you, I hope you can see that. 
That's just the head and shoulders of an angel. And it's an angel by an American artist who I love. I love all his work. Um, this is what I do, by the way. On my framed cross-stitch, I try to put a copy of the, the chart on the, in there, copy of the picture that it, and some information underneath um, my name, address, etc. Um, date, which I do put, or did put, sorry again, glare. Um, my uh, initials, JLC, June Linda Cross, so I always put a cross there indicating my Christianity and my surname. That said, ladies, I have changed my name formally, Deed Pole. Um, I'm just waiting for the certified copies to come through and then I'll let you know formally. Um, and perhaps a little instigate and into why. Okay, so there's a, just a couple of things for you to look at while we're doing, doing this. Right, now, I, I, I think there's 12 here. I don't know. There's no structure because my head was all over the place trying to think, what shall I say? What shall I tell you? <laughs> so please forgive me um, if I go, you know, oh, oh gosh, these ladies, by the way, before me who've done this are absolutely fantastic. You know, they had a structure. You can see how they've written it down and they were able to look at their notes and, you know, refocus where they're on. Oh, no. Fantastic. I do admire you all. I used to be like that, but uh, with my brain these days, no. I'm totally, totally all over the place. Okay, so you all know um, who I am now. Um, I, some, uh, somebody, one of them, um, the videos I was looking at said, she was a Virgo, something like that, and it, it just made me think. Um, I don't believe in horoscopes or anything like that. Um, and I did used to get asked quite often, um, what stars are you? Um, or what, I can't just remember how it used to come out. And I'd say, no, I haven't got a star. Um, Jesus is my star. So that's, that's it. So I don't, I, you know, don't say I'm Pisces or anything else. You know, it doesn't, uh, I just don't believe in it. Okay, right. So one of the first things um, I thought I'd let you know that you may not know um, is the fact that I was born in 1946, just after the Second World War, and I was born to um, a mother who came from um, Belgium. I mean, oh gosh, I've got to think now. I keep going to say she was born in Ostend, but she wasn't. I'm sure she was born in um, Ghent. Um, her mother um, and uh, grandmother, all that side of the family come from there. And my grandmother met my grandfather in the um, First World War while he was stationed over there. Um, he bought... Uh, his family into into England, sorry, into Britain. Um, I'm afraid I haven't got dates with Mary. We used to have it all because we'd done the family tree, etc., etc., but I'm afraid it's all gone now. Unless I look at the, all the documents, I've got nothing. Um, so, when I was old enough to know who was who in my family, there was my great-gran, my grandma, my nan, we used to call her, Mecha, we called um, my great gran. Again, I can't remember whether that's a Flemish name um, for grandma or I don't know. I can't just remember again. But that's what we called a Mecha. Um, so there was Mecha. There was my nan, nan Batch. We used to call her Bachelor. Um, oh, which is going to be my, is my now, uh, um, surname. So I've gone from cross to bachelor. Um, 
so yes, Nambach, we used to call her. Um, mum and they all live, not my mum, <laughs> my grand and my granddad and my great grand, sorry, all lived in the same house and they spoke Flemish much of the time. Now I'll never understand it, I never really got an answer from my, my dear mum, God bless her, um, for this, but uh, my, um, the person that I thought was my father um, came from Wales and mum was uh, from Belgium but and spoke Flemish in the, in the home situation but I was never or my um, deceased sister um, were, were taught how to speak in their, their language isn't that sad? I think I, I think it's awful. I, I still think it's dreadful. You know, I'd love to um, to be able to speak to um, friends now that I've got in Belgium and relatives. There's only one or two left now, but it would be lovely to be able to speak um, in that language. But there you go. And as I say, I never got to the bottom of it. It's really, really weird. I suspect my... Um, the male members of the family had something to do, or the, yeah, the male members of the family had something to do with it, but I'll never find out. And consequently, I couldn't really converse with my, with Mitya, my great gran, um, because she couldn't speak um, English. Nan could, but she couldn't. So that was so, so sad. Um, I think it's so important. I mean, it wouldn't happen these days that you could learn as many languages as you possibly can. Because it's so easy when you, you're tiny, you know, you're like a sponge, aren't you? OK, so again, most people know about um, my uh, my children. I've got two children and many grandchildren, which, as I say, most people know about. Um, I just think it's interesting that... Um, when my children were, let's say, seven years old, nine years old for Claire, um, sorry about the chiming, although a lot of people say they like it, uh, they had 12 grandparents still alive. So you can imagine they had Nanny Wales, the nanny who lived in Wales, and um, Nanny Batch, and Nanny this, Nanny that, you know. So it got a little bit confusing for them. So basically, all the, all the grandparents on my side were alive, and all the grandparents, or yeah, grandparents on my husband's side were um, still alive. So that that was interesting. Okay, going back in my um, life again, I think I've mentioned this before. Yes, I have mentioned it, but only probably on Facebook. Um, I was mercilessly bullied um, at school. I was a tiny little thing apparently um, I didn't look very well as a, as a toddler and as a little child and people used to stop my mum in the street and ask what was the matter with me. Um, I didn't eat <laughs> normal food, I didn't like food, still don't like um, food to a certain extent. Um, <sighs> What was I going to say? Oh yeah, bullied, right from the the word go, as far as I can remember. Perhaps my infant school, I vaguely remember that. Um, no, there was no such a thing. But once junior and certainly senior um, school came along, my goodness, it was pretty horrific. So I was a very lonely, insular child um, who came out of school with not one qualification at all. Um, couldn't see the blackboard because I needed glasses but I was too shy to say I couldn't see it and you know things went on so yeah. Um, I always wanted to get married and have children um, but I never went out to, to meet boys or anything like that. I just didn't do that. Stopped in continually. <laughs> I remember mum saying, you know, she couldn't keep um, my sister in. 
she was enjoying her, her teenage years, but uh, couldn't get me out. Um, um, right. I, um, I did meet um, my husband-to-be, and uh, we got married and had, as I said, two children. Um, the marriage came to an end very quickly, well, in my eyes, very quickly, 13, 14 years I was married. Um, and then we divorced, which I won't obviously go into. Um, in between, um, was it in between the divorce or was it just after the divorce? I'm not quite sure. No, it was before the divorce, that's right. I um, took a part-time uh, job in the local hospital. Um, my sister, what at that time, was a midwife. And my mother was a, a nursing auxiliary, nurse's aide, um, in maternity. And I said to them, you know, I'd love to come and work there. And they said, OK, we'll, you know, see what uh, we can work out. So they got me... Um, not a formal interview, but some, you know, a uh, conversation with one of the nursing officers who said, we, we're completely staffed at the moment, but if you go over to that building over there, and they were referring to the general um, hospital, um, <laughs> and I got a job straight away. Mum said, oh, well, you won't like that. People die over there. <laughs> but I did. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So um, I was going to do my, well, I won't go into a, what I did and what I didn't do with my training, but I ended up um, not doing my formal um, three years training, but uh, did 25 years as a, a nursing auxiliary. Um, and in between that, the... Um, I got, I was recruited to the Nurses Trade Union, which was at that time Cozy, it was called. And um, I got quite involved in that, representing nurses, you know, in, um, in any disciplinary or grievances um, cases that they had. And really, really enjoyed doing that. Um, I think it was the first time in my life that um, I'd, I'd ever had any confidence you know, to, to talk to people, and yeah, it worked out quite well. Um, so that went along nicely, and I was then, and I'm um, quite proud to say this, um, effectively, they call it today, I think, headhunted from um, being a, a nursing auxiliary and a, a trade union representative, um, by the personnel and training department in the hospital to join their management team. It's it's quite uh what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Quite um oh gosh, common in factories and um well in factories in Coventry. You know, you'd probably start off on the shop floor uh working at um you know machinery because Coventry was um, a big car factory, uh, sorry, car industry, many years ago, and then work up to a foreman, etc., etc. Um, so you'd go, you know, from being a shop steward basically to being um, management. Um, but it was the first time it had happened in the NHS, as far as I'm aware. So I was, I was proud of that, and went indeed went into personnel at the end of my um, time with the NHS and again thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, because I'd served 25 years service um, I was invited and went to the Queen's Garden Party. Yes, I was there. Um, Princess Diana was there, Prince Charles and various other members of the uh, royal family, Princess Diana. Oh, she was lovely. I can almost see her now. She was laughing and, you know, not a bit um, stiff and stay like the others, you know, 
great. So that, that was absolutely super. Um, right. I became a magistrate as well during my time as a, um, a shop steward um, and then my time in personnel. In in this country, the uh, magistrates uh, and you're not paid. It's uh, you do it out of a pub sense of public service, whatever. Um, I decided when the offer was made to me that uh, yes, I I sort of looked at magistrates as lords and ladies. You know, the rich people of the country. So I thought, well, I'm certainly not rich, and I'm certainly not a lord, and I'm certainly not a lady. So yes, I was quite, um, I was quite happy to to do that, and I sat on various tribunals. Um, one of them was called the Supplementary Benefit Tribunal, something that's long gone. And um, I'm, I think I'm, um, well, I am. I'm proud to say that I was part of um, a Supplementary Benefit Tribunal was. Um, for people who who believed the supplementary benefit that they were receiving in these days wasn't quite enough or um, one aspect of it wasn't paid to them and there was usually um, a solicitor as chairman and then two wingers of which I was one of them um, would make the decision for them and one of the things that um, pregnant uh, mothers and sorry pregnant women and new mothers needed um, was equipment for the for the babies for the newborn babies, and on the list of what equipment was needed was um, a bucket, <laughs> a metal bucket, or a metal reception receptacle of some form, so you could put it on your stove with boiling water and boil your the baby's bottles and teats. Well, I couldn't believe this. <laughs> Because this is years after, you know, most people would use that sort of equipment. We'd gone into the sterilising bottle of bottles in unit. You know the sterilising units that you used to get and put in sterilising tablets? Milton, I think we called them at that time. Um, and I think I was, um, as I say, proud to become part of the uh, the team, if you like, that recommended to the the. the government of the day, the, the department of um, whatever it was called in those days, that we needed to get rid of this metal bucket as part of the needs of new mothers and get this modern sterilising unit on the list. I mean, it's it's an aside, but I th it was quite important at the time. Um, I don't know what number we're on, by the way. I might be waffling on forever. And I'm going 23 minutes now, which is ridiculous. I'm going to whiz now through. Um, one of the things I used to do um, was to see if you can just see that. Um, I used to be pen pals. I used to write to people. Um, it was men in my case. Three people I actually wrote to over the years on death row in various states. Um, these are some of the letters and cards. I can show you this one that I got from one of my men. Um, Merry Christmas, that was his card. Um, Happy New Year. And he, uh, this was, I noticed when I turned this over, this was 1996, I used to do this. And um, that was a poem that he, he, somebody had written, it wasn't him, Tony Hamilton, a prisoner. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the pen, not a convict was happy, not even a grin. <laughs> and at the end, he's made a mistake, he committed a sin, would he ever be welcome for Christmas again? Um, so June, hello in the sweet name of Christ. I wish you the very best this season and a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <sighs> I still get a full up. <sighs> Remember Jesus is the reason for the season. God bless you and keep you. <laughs>
to me, you see. <laughs> uh, Psalm 186. Somebody who is waiting to die could be so positive and write such wonderful things. So, uh, actually, the reason I got... I saw a documentary on um, TV and it was about um, death row, the various prisons in America and the actual death sentence and uh, the prisoners on death row itself. And at the end of that documentary was um, a little sort of advertisement about this, and it's called Human Rights, and they're still going today. So if anybody feels the need, you know, please go on to the website, because I know it's there, I've had a look. Um, and you see all the states uh, there, and you can make arrangements to uh, write to them. You get all sorts of newsletters and what have you. That was an, the the artists. Gosh, they were amazing. Absolutely, yeah. You get sort of newsletters, and this one was look newsletter went to two thousand and two. So that's just an aside. You certainly, I don't think, knew about that with me. Perhaps um, Diana and Tricia, my two gorgeous friends. Hi, Diane. Hi, Tricia. Um knew about it but not many other people did i'm going to do something with these letters one day but i don't know what still i haven't made up my mind one day now we're doing all these journals um perhaps uh, i'll get round to to doing something where's my oh don't say i've lost my bit of paper no here it is um yeah so i did that um I uh, used to do yoga. I got very involved with um, a yoga group not far from me here. And uh, we used to attend a convent um, in Derbyshire, just in sort of mid-England. And uh, we get, went to this convent only because there was a large sort of area that we could practice yoga and um, I can't think what I was going to say now. Practice yoga and, you know, meditate, etc, etc. Anyway, I soon got out of there because, well, I believe the Lord sort of grabbed me and said, hey, this is not for you, and pulled me out. Because being in the convent, I went to a couple of the Sunday services and it became very evident that this yoga group was verging on the edge of the occult. So I got out of that very swiftly and it was about that time I committed again because I'm baptised um, a Christian. Um, I became um, not a born again Christian but I found my faith again. Um, lots to tell you about the convent and, and the stories but the that's not for today. Okay, um, so collector, I have collected all my life. I have collected the obvious sort of, um, no I haven't collected all my life, that's a fib. I collected when I came to this flat which was 1996 I think it was. Um, Things like Ladro and Royal Dalton, you know, the ornaments, the, the, the nice things you buy for your home. Um, then I decided, because I was um, interested in um, the convent that I've just referred to, etc. Um, I collected, and still have got them up in the loft somewhere, dolls that are in, uh, nun dolls, you know. Um... <laughs> And there's dozens up there, not just one, two or three, dozens. Um, monks, I decided I wanted to... Um, I, honestly, I laugh at myself now. Um, choir boys, because, you know, I was in the choir in, in my local church, which most people know. Dolls, you name it, I collected it. And it became really a bit of a compulsion I guess 
and uh, I now class myself as a hoarder. I'm now being helped <laughs> um, by a local housing association because, you know, I'm 70 now. Um, I can't stop in this flat forever because it's um, I'm on a first floor um, building and my health, as you know, most people know, is pretty bad at the moment. Um, so this housing association is going to come and help me de-stash and declutter because it's too big a job on my own. I've been trying to do it for several years um, and it's not working. It's not working quickly enough because I'm hoping to go into sheltered accommodation at some point. Now there's loads more to tell you but, you know, there's not the time. And now I've been on 30 minutes, which is crazy. I'm going. <laughs> if there's anything that you, you know, you really want to know more about, please get in contact with me. I'd love to talk to you, particularly on Skype. Um, I'm not very good anymore at typing. You know, um, my hands are useless these days. The dexterity, um, strength, they, they cramp up. Um, all sorts of things happen. My eyes are even worse. I can't really see what I'm doing. Um, so I'd much rather um, meet and talk to you on Skype. So please get in contact. And as I say, if you want to know more about anything, or if I touched on something that you were, you, you know, more interested in, please get in touch. And that's it. And um, I hope this is all right, Virginia. And I hope I haven't bored everybody to tears. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.